What's going on, golf fans? It's your boy, GS Luke, here with a DFS preview for this week's Shriners Children's Open. Gonna go through what you need to know before building your DFS lineups to go out there and have yourself a week for some of those large field GPPs. We'll start it off with a look at the golf course, TPC Summerlin, and some of the key stats that you should keep an eye on. And then towards the end of the video, we're gonna cover one DFS play in each price range. It gives you an idea of the sort of players that I'm targeting for my player pool this week. So without further ado, a lot to get into. Let's go ahead and start it off with a look at some of those key stats of the week. TPC Summerlin is as close to a birdie fest as you're going to see. There are going to be plenty of wedges out there, also a lot of putting stats that are coming into play. So when you look at my modeling for this week, especially when you look at the course fit category, it's going to be a lot of really good wedge players and a lot of good bent grass putters. Um, you've seen that in the winners over the last four or five years, but especially when you look at some of the top 25 finishers, um, and some of the stats that correlate to that. Number one correlation would be your shots game putting on bent grass, but pretty much number two through 10 are all different type of wedge ranges, whether it's out of Bermuda rough or out of the fairway from like 100 yards and in, which is why if you look at my modeling over there on the Patreon, where you can get all of the weightings I use for all the different categories here, um, a lot of it's on the 50 to 125, this 125 to 150 yard range. So um, believe it or not, it is a 7,200 yard golf course which normally you'd think there'd be a few more long irons or even mid irons out there. But because of how far the ball travels out west, also some of the real firm bedrock that you have underneath these fairways, um, you get an extra 20, 30, sometimes even 40, 50 additional yards off the tee. So um, that's why you have so many wedges. Um, they do shorten the golf course as well quite a bit, um, which is why you see some of the exceptional scoring around this event. If you're going to look at putting, look at bent grass. Um, something to note is that they have bent grass greens, but everything else on property, the rough fairways, collars, tee boxes, you name it, are all going to be Bermuda grass. So you've got that Bermuda rough, which can be a little bit unpredictable. Bermuda grass around the green, whether it's hitting out of grainy fairways or of course out of that Bermuda rough, which I mentioned is so unpredictable. It's real tricky when you get offline here. So Bent grass greens, right? If you're going to look at those stats and then everything else you want to be considering Bermuda grass. Uh, of course, history in my model, also birdie your better percentage anytime you're at this easy of a track. And in terms of your comp courses, a few that I'm looking at, but uh, not really a good week for comps. Not really comps that stick out in my opinion, especially because we have this unique agronomy situation, right? With the bent grass, with the Bermuda grass going on, just something we don't see all that often on the PGA Tour. But hopping over to our plays, we'll hop into one play in each price range to give you an idea of the type of players that I'm getting to. And I think if you're going to take chalk this week, and really the only chalky play that we're going to go through here, um, you want to do it up top, right? With one of your spend up options and what better candidate than your winner last year, right? The guy that went out there was very consistent round one through four there. Um, really good putter, right? Especially on Bermuda grass, which this week it's bent. You can see um, his numbers in general on Ben Arnold all that great, but uh, everything else on Bermuda is fantastic, right? So I mentioned everything but the greens are Bermuda. His around the green numbers on Bermuda are the best in the field. Believe it or not, he raises his baseline both around the green and on approach on Bermuda grass. And then on bent grass, I know the numbers in general aren't fantastic, but last year he gained a ton of strokes putting here, right? So he's done it before. He's had a few spike performances on these type of greens. And I would say Las Vegas bent grass, right, is going to be a lot different than, let's say, Augusta National bent grass or Midwestern bent grass, like what you have for Detroit in the you know Rocket Mortgage Classic. They're all technically bent grass surfaces, but probably play a lot different. And what we know is that Tom Kim went out there and absolutely lit it up at this golf course last year. So just a spot where I'm not overthinking it. He played exceptionally well the last Eurotour event that he played in. He's played a few international events over the last month or so and pretty much showed up in every single event. So I like what we see from Tom. Kim, $10,900 um, is obviously very expensive, right? He's the second most expensive player in the field, but considering that he's the defending champion, he's coming in with form. And I think from a course fit perspective, checks most of the boxes I'm looking for just to go through them, right? 
exceptional wedge player. So checks pretty much all of those buckets. Um, Bent grass putting, we already talked about it, right? Maybe not the best for his career, but really good at this golf course. And then around the green on Bermuda, one of the best players in the world. Off the tee is more of an accuracy first kind of guy, which uh, if you can see my modeling percentages in Patreon, uh, you'd see that I'm much more on driving accuracy than I am on driving distance this week. And then in terms of the comp courses, it's not an elite comp course history, but it's half decent, right? For the small sample size that Tom Kim has. So just a play that, you know, I was on last year. I bet Tom Kim at this event to win. And frankly, I'm going for the back to back, right? Bet him outright was the first click this week. I know the outright number isn't great, but, uh, really isn't all that far off from what we had last year and is obviously a much more experienced and much more well-rounded player at this stage of his career than what we had last year. Next up, we're going to go down into this 8K range. So uh, I kind of combined the 9 and 10K range together, right? It's your spend-up option here. But here for this mid-range option, we've got Bo Hostler. He's $8,100, which I would argue is a very fair price tag, right, considering the strength of field. You know, normally we all wouldn't love Bo Hostler in the 8K range, but it's doable when you consider how weak this field is, right? How top heavy it can be up there in the, you know, 10K range for your spend up options. So first off, Will Hostler has elite event history, right? Something that I don't think a lot of people will give him credit for. He's made the cut here the last four starts that he's had, um, including two top 30 finishes and what, three of them were th um, top 35 finishes um, back when he wasn't playing nearly as consistently as he is now. If we take a look at the last 36 rounds, it isn't earth shattering for somebody like Hostler, but still gaining in three of the four stat categories, a slight loser on approach, which really compared to his long-term baseline is a huge plus. Normally he is one of the worst approach players that you have in all the field. And if he does anything well with the irons, right, it's the wedges. It's the 125 yards and in sort of shots where Bo Hostler can go out there and gain to the field. So he's going to have plenty of those to work with. For whatever reason, when Bo Hostler gets out there to West Coast time, I know he's not out there in California his home state. Actually, I think he was from Texas. He's played a lot of, he's played really well out West. That's all I know is whenever you get him into California, that guy seemingly finishes top 25 every single time. Well, maybe it's just a West Coast kind of thing because of all those made cuts he has at this event as well. So $8,100, he's an AM wave tea time. Actually, He's technically in the AM, but he's part of that PM wave out there. Um, another player that I'm definitely going to be getting some attention to, especially considering, look at this, getting 0.7 strokes per round with bent grass. I mean, that is some of the best stuff in the field. I mean, I know 0.87 shots for Justin Sa, um, who I am playing this week too, just for full transparency, but 0.69 shots, that is, uh, like I said, cream of the crop type of stuff. If you want access to everything you see on the spreadsheet that is blacked out, right, including all my key stat modeling weights over here on the Patreon. Make sure to check that out down below. Um, we have different sorts of memberships available based on what you're looking for in terms of content. So you can go for the prop tier. You can go for the DFS tier. There's also just a golf tier in general, whatever fits what you're looking for, right? If you're playing on underdog and prize picks, make sure to check out the prop stuff. But if you're more of a DFS guy, you know, a lot of the audience watching this video, right, is watching it for DFS purposes. Well, then there's a DFS tier for you there as well, right? So you're not paying for stuff that you don't want. You're Get, not getting flooded with extra content that you're not looking for. And you can get access to everything that I'm offering, right? That includes modeling, projections, ownership for everyone in the field, including my full player pool for every single slate. That includes main slate for every golf tournament on the PGA Tour. Also, showdown for rounds two through four of all PGA Tour events. So check that out. Like I said, there's a link down below and it goes a huge way with helping support the channel as well. And now for our last two picks. So one's going to be a 7K golfer and this one's actually a pretty cheap 7k golfer and then we're going to go down into this 6k range as well and for our first cheap option it's uh, going to be Callum Turan who for quite some time now has been one of the better T to green players in the field and that's not an exaggeration right let's look at the stats here so over the last 12 measured rounds it's really been standout for Turan where he's gaining 0.4 strokes per round in all three T to green categories but even if we zoom out a little bit right make it a multiple month sample size it holds up 
up, right? He's maybe not as exceptional, but he's still gaining across all three categories, and he's gaining a stroke per round tee to green, which in this field would be easily top 20, right? Especially over the last 36 rounds, I believe he's top 10 in that category, right? Price down here, number 47 in the pricing. So if you're somebody that just loves a ball striker, right? Loves somebody that can keep themselves in play, well, Terran's going to be your guy, but what really sold me on him, right? And whether you're looking at a longer term sample, right, where he's losing 0.3 strokes or a short term sample where he's losing the same 0.3 strokes per round, um, he's not been very sharp with the putter, right? He's been a little bit sporadic there. Um, he's had to go out there and spike putt to get some of those top end performances, but look how good he is on bent grass, right? Gains 0.64 shots per round. So if there's any surface you'd expect him to have that spike performance, but we've seen Callum Turan have top fives on the PGA Tour every single one of them, I believe, except for maybe one or two over his entire career, right? This is not just this season, right? Has been on bent grass, right? It's where you've seen him gain four or five strokes putting. I believe his best putting performance ever was like seven strokes putting, I believe for like the John Deere Classic last year uh, on bent grass, the same surface that we're going to have here. So Callum Turan, $7,200, a player that I'm considering for my player pool. And once again, another one of these like PMT times. I know it says AM here is 11:40 AM, but uh, yeah, he's one of the first tee times out of that PM wave. And the last player we'll go through here, he's down here in the 6K range, and I think he's egregiously mispriced. It's Harry Hall at $6,700. He's from Las Vegas, has played this golf course a million times. I'd have to imagine, and has played really well here. So if we look at his sample over the last two years, he was a sponsor invite two years ago. I uh, was able to play last year with his full status. It had a T8 finish that first time around. I believe that might have even been like a Monday Q that he had. And then last year had a T15 finish. On bent grass has been unbelievable, right? Gaining 0.54 strokes per round for his career. And that's over a relatively large sample for Harry Hall. And I know it hasn't been amazing with the form of late, but just look at some of his flash performances, right? Even like over the last three, four months, right? He's had a few of those top 20 finishes, nearly won, what was it? The Charles Schwab challenge out there, had a few other top 10 finishes. He's a player that when he's playing well, typically contends to win the golf tournament, right? And if we're at a place that's gonna be a putting contest, Test, right? A birdie fest. Well, Harry Hall has to be on your radar. So I thought he'd be at least like $7,300, $7,400. I also thought he'd be getting some sort of ownership, but at this point, he's lower priced than he definitely should be. And it looks like the ownership's going to stay pretty low too. So at least I'm hoping, right? You might get some last second steam, especially with some people pointing him out, but that's all right, right? He's still going to be relatively low owned, but I think it's going to be an exceptional play in GPPs. So I know we started off a little bit chalky, right? Especially with Tom Kim up top. But as long as you're mixing in players down here, like a Turan that I don't think is going to be mega chalk, right? He might be like five to 7% owned down here with Harry Hall, a player that I think will definitely be sub 5% owned. You mix in a few of those guys and your product ownership is doing just fine. So this is meant to be more of an overall preview for this week, right? Not necessarily all just picks. Just know that up top, I'm going to be a little bit more chalky, right? It's not just Tom Kim over there on the Patreon. You'll see that I'm playing a lot of just the slam dunk obvious plays up top, right? not really overthinking it, trying to, you know, put myself in a rut, you know, at the beginning of building my lineups. I'm more so trying to, you know, win the contest, right? Get my leverage ownership wise everywhere else, right? Whether it's the 8K range, the 7, 6K options that we were going through and finding a way to get different that way. Alrighty guys, that is all I've got for the weekly preview. Make sure to check out my live stream tomorrow, which will be at 7 p.m. Eastern time, where we'll be going through the weather, whether there's going to be any sort of edge out there to the AM or the PM wave, but go through all your questions, some game theory notes, last second ownership, and just make sure you're ready to go out there and build your lineup. So if you felt this video was helpful, all this information is going to help you have a better week, well, go ahead, smash that like button for me, and also comment down below who you've got winning this golf tournament. If you can get that winner correct, I'll go ahead, I'll give you a free month of the Patreon uh, to go out there and try out the services you see in the video for yourself. So if you want that free month of the Patreon, go ahead, let me know your winner and let's go out there and have ourselves a week. I appreciate the support here, guys. Again, make sure to check out the Patreon if you want access to all of that content that you saw to go out there and have yourself a week. <music>